Hello, my fellow sorcerers. Here we go again. Oh no. Rest in peace, ball lightning. Oh yes! Joking aside, I am very, actually, genuinely excited for Season 3. We know what it's all about now, we know all the seasonal mechanics, we know how the Seneschal will work and the bonuses it will give us, a lot of which are incredibly synergistic with Sorcerer. We know how we're getting buffed, we know how we're getting nerfed, and we know what we're getting new. And all of it comes together to essentially say, hey, your old best build in Ball Lightning is kind of... But everything else is looking very bright, and I have a lot of both hope and excitement for a lot of builds, a couple of completely new ones that I cannot wait to test and present to you guys. I just, I love theory crafting so much, and I will always be here pushing Sorcerer to its limit, inventing new builds, improving old ones, and just generally doing what I can for what is always clearly the best class in Diablo 4. Am I right, guys? But before we jump ahead to all of that, it is time for the best leveling build for Season 3 to get you up to and into Nightmare, pushing towards Torment in mere hours, slaughtering through, well, everything. Now, before before we go on to that, two things. First, I want to talk about a little bit of the patch notes specifically while you're here, as a lot of people have asked me my thoughts. And two, before I do that, you are seeing in the background the build in action. It is going to be a firewall Arclash hybrid leveling build that has proven insanely effective. Like, ridiculously so, actually. But... Every time I do a leveling build, there is always a small minority that looks at uh, the dungeon being done and goes, You're not instantly deleting every enemy and completing it in five seconds? No, I'm not, because it's a leveling build. I don't have a single vampiric power on, of course. I don't have any paragon in, no glyphs. I don't have any legendary aspects other than the three codex strength ones that I will be recommending for the build. I just have random, rare, bad gear in every slot. Other than that, I am nerfed down to the ground and yet still, well, walking through a torment dungeon to show that it is as effective as, well, I'm wanting it to be and telling you guys that it is. So I just really want to stress that I am ultra nerfed to prove the point of the leveling build in the background. In any case, then, let's actually talk this. The big one, then, fixed an issue where Ball Lightning was dealing far more damage than intended. We did kind of think it was a bug, but it is still a little bit sad to see. It's definitely going to hit a lot less hard in Season 3, which, coupled with another nerf, is... Yeah, it isn't looking good for Ball Lightning. This one, however, is more surprising and perhaps even sadder. So now, with the Static Surge node, we cannot use, like, the Chain Lightning lightning enchant to restore mana and apply vulnerable because automatically cast skills don't trigger it anymore which was kind of the biggest perk of this and it sort of also killed Static Surge. So that's really lame and something to keep in consideration. Then I want to look at one of the new everyone aspects, aspect of adaptability. When you're below half mana, your basic skills generate resource. When you're above half mana, your basic skills deal a lot more damage. If you've read both of that and gone, ah, clash? Well then, yeah, I'm with you. That is very exciting, and normally the new aspect is acquirable in the season journey into the codex fairly early early on, and it's one of the reasons that our clash will be woven in to this firewall leveling build right from the start. I'm hoping to essentially be able to create a leveling build that you don't need to change or tweak until you start actually getting good gear and thinking about a proper build to tackle torment, and adaptility here is going to be a big part of that. As to be fair, our Pain Gorgeous Gauntlets, which look like they're going to be amazing for a basic skill and normal skill hybrid build, and that's something I want to experiment with with, but isn't super relevant for now, but it is exciting. Then, specifically for Sorcerer, we have the new Meteor Unique, that is definitely nice, and Aspects of Shredding Blades is really cool to see. An extra 25% multiplicative vulnerable damage is really, really good, that is like another Storm Swell aspect, and that's one of our best aspects, and it comes from another source of vulnerable, we now have three whole sources of actually usable vulnerability. Ice Blades, Lightning Spear, and the usual Frost Nova, so that's really nice 
and there is potential there. Ice Blades might still be a bit just too weak in how they function, but if we can get that cooldown reduction engine applied to uh, various builds, this might come in very handy, so watch this space. Ball Lightning, yes, it has been attack speed nerfed, which coupled with the damage, I mean, it's hitting less hard, it's ticking less often, it's not, as I keep saying, looking good. They have target enhanced, and seeing that 200% end up reading 25%, even if it's structured differently, yeah, kind of awkward. The Blizzard change is just nice. Lightning Spear crits applying vulnerable, that's amazing. Lightning Spear crits, that's what it does, so this is a great source of automatic ranged vulnerable. The Paragon changes are fine, the Searing Heat little uh, buff is okay. I mean, the Critical Strike chance not applying now applying might make it feel like a bigger buff, and uh, Conjuration damage going to 5% is tiny, but in practice it might feel like a lot more, so that is definitely one to watch too. Burning Instinct, however, is a big increase. That is a lot of extra percent bonus burning damage, and we might actually be able to go somewhere with that, and that's another reason that Firewall early on might start to shine. Then, only really couple little changes. Meteorite uh, doing 30% of uh, the main Meteor's damage from Shattered Stars is a huge deal, and uh, really uh, makes that new Meteor build they're pushing even more attractive. A little bump to Lamessen is fine. I like Charge Bolt, so I'll definitely play with that. And a little bump to Ice Art when nobody really uses it. It's not going to dethrone to Bolt, so... Yeah. So that's kind of my quick Blitz Sorcerer patch notes. So without further ado then, let's actually go on to the leveling build now that we have context for changes. So if any of them apply to decisions I've made, you know what's up with that. And yeah, as you've been seeing, it is a nice, solid our clash mixed with fireball using a few of the new uh, little bumps like lightning spear for another source of vulnerability while leveling which normally is quite hard to do because frost nova has such a long cooldown before you get cooldown reduction and generally it's just worked out really really well it gives you a great base to build in to uh, well various other more end game builds and if we can get hold of that new aspect early on it's going to skyrocket even further and it's very easy to pilot. It's very hard to die. You have so much healing coming in, so many barriers coming in, even though we're low level and we don't have a lot of cooldown reduction, as I said, and it just kind of lets you walk along not thinking about anything, and off we go. And coupled with the Seneschal powers I'll be recommending, it's going to get even more effective, and it actually mitigates one of the main annoyances slash weaknesses of Firewall, which is really exciting. So without further ado then, let's get into our skill tree and get to the best way to do all of the things come Season 3 leveling speed, ease and efficiency. The skill tree then is the place to start, especially for leveling point by point. We shall go... Why? Why is my skill tree broken? Anyway, we're going to begin by getting Arclash, and then get Enhanced Arclash, and then lastly, Glinting Arclash. This will make up your first ability, and that's all neat. Over to your cause, where here, we're going to preemptively just get Fireball in uh, preparation for the enchantment slot, because there's nothing else we end up needing, so this can just take us to the next tier, and we do that pretty exactly with just three points into it. Three in the Arc Clash, three in the Fireball, and we are done with these two entire sections. Now we have got here, you want to acquire yourself Teleport, and you want to acquire yourself Frost Nova. Upgrade the Teleport to Enhanced and Shimmering, and then upgrade the Frost Nova to uh, Mystical for another source of Vulnerable. Talking of another source of Vulnerable, then we want to get Lightning Spear. And and take it to Invoked. Now we've got another source of Vulnerable. As I said, talking of a source of Vulnerable. You probably wish I would talk less of sources of Vulnerable, but I'm just gonna... I'm, I'm sorry, I am... I am just, uh, 
just sorry. At this point, grab your enchantment then, whack fireball in, and we are good on that front. And then, finally, we want to fill out a few little extras. Primarily, grab yourself precision magic, at least one, to get to your mastery. Now we're at mastery, we can go all in on firewall, five out of five it, enhance it, and then you want to mages it so the burning stays as long as possible, and now we have the start of our actual setup. Then we want to head over to your ultimates, where we're going to get Inferno, take it to Prime, take it to Supreme, and enjoy the infinite mana pull-ins, and our actual skill bar now is finished. So now we're going to fill out some more of the tree from earlier to get to our key passive. We want to start by just grabbing all of Glass Cannon, we're not in danger of dying at any point early on, so it's just nice free damage, and then we can get Elemental Attunement 2 to reset set defensives, which is also very, very nice. We want to now grab our second enchantment, which is going to be Firewall, to spawn more Firewalls, and as soon as you have this second enchantment, we want to finish the raw lucky hit to help power it, as we won't have a lot from gear as we're leveling and just constantly swapping out our gear, so precision magic is really carrying. Now, depending on whether you're dying a lot or not, or need some survivability, or just want more damage, you have a few choices to make, but ultimately you're going to end up in the same place. Place anyway. Let's go the full damage route where we want to get permafrost and then hoarfrost. This will make it so whenever we frost nova, we utterly annihilate whatever is frozen and you really feel it and it is incredible for packs of elite as we go along. Then we want to get our key passive. We want combustion to power up the firewall. It makes more sense than all of the others. And then we want fiery surge just so we can get to endless pyre and then we we put two into warmth. Three would be fine, but we want to save the point, and two is enough healing that we don't have to worry about any kind of danger while leveling, so we can leave it like this. Then we want to head here, grab yourself inner flames to do more damage while healthy, and then crippling flames so the firewall will immobilize, playing into aspect of control that we will grab from the codex. Then we want to get our double defensives in mana shield and protection, get that damage reduction coming in, and the constant barriers, as we can get some barrier synergy from the codex too, so we do make use of this. Lastly then, we are left with two points and these can essentially go wherever you want them to go. Power up your Arclash, power up uh, your Devastation, give yourself a little bit more maximum mana. Literally, the skill tree is your oyster here, but I personally like them to finish up Fireball, which is why we only have the two in Warmth, because the extra damage from the Fireball enchant is just really, really nice, but you can do four in there and three in here. And at that point, you are most certainly done. The leveling build complete. So we are all set up and looking good. When it comes to playing this, it's very much straightforward. Use Lightning Spear on cooldown. Use Frost Nova on every pack of elites that you get to. Use Teleport on cooldown to speed up your leveling and go quick fast. Teleport is also specifically going to be very useful at avoiding traps in the vaults and I think might make Sorcerer particularly good because we're not going to have to worry about any of the more, more complicated traps because we're just going to teleport past them. So that's that's quite good. Use your Inferno either on cooldown or save it for when there's a particularly big pack of enemies to get that infinite mana on your firewall. That's it. Offensively, two rules. Do you have mana? Cast firewall. Do you not have mana? Cast Arclash. Literally, that is it, and it will play beautifully for you. Try and angle your firewall so it hits as many enemies as possible. If I came at it from this, I would do one down the middle and then miss four of them, so I want to make sure it goes this way and hits everyone. Just kind of basic firewall stuff, and past that, yeah. 
It is as easy as can be. Now, the reason we are arc clashing is because this will carry you until you get to your firewall. It does enough damage and it is potent enough by itself. But once you do have it, we do want to have a basic skill because we will be playing with that new aspect. We also want it because it will play into one of the Seneschal's effects that we will get to. In any case, talking of aspects, let's have a look at the gear. Now, obviously, this is a leveling build, so we only can really reliably use Codex aspects. Anything else that you find is a bonus, but we have to sort of fall back on the Codex. So when it comes to the Codex, well, the three that you want are as follows. Uh, you want uh, your Rapid, so your Arclash, Arclash is faster. This will play into the new aspect for its both mana regen and damage increase. Then we want to have control. Now, you can swap these round depending on whether you value the extra control damage or the more attack speed damage. Uh, give the one you like best to your necklace slot, but control definitely. And then, finally, prodigies to get the mana regen whenever we use one of our cooldowns of which we are using consistently. It will help keep you topped up and keep those firewalls are spamming. That is nice. When we do get that new aspect, aspect of adaptation ability, which in theory should come from the season journey pretty soon, you want to have this going, and you want to ideally put it on your next slot and then move whichever you did have either to a ring or to your gloves as another option. You can pretty much just leave your gloves, your rings, and your necklace as aspect carriers the entire leveling journey while upgrading every other slot as you find it. Always just put on your highest item power weapon and uh, you uh, will uh, do well. Now, if you uh, want a little bit further than that, well, let's actually go uh, to uh, the Codex and have a little bit of a look. One uh, thing uh, to consider is Storm Swell, as we will be having barriers a lot, so put this on whatever weapon you happen to have. If you want to keep updating the aspect, this will do good. And uh, then you also kind of want to have Disobedience, if you could, again, be bothered, not strictly necessary while leveling, but it is from the Codex, so it will help you out. Past that, you just kind of want to do whatever you want as you find it. Technically speaking, we could get ourselves uh, Incendiary for the extra mana if you uh, feel like you're still running out. You can grab Aspect of Might if you are feeling a little bit squishy, put it on your legs, we'll be air clashing enough to keep it up. And then any general burning or firewall aspect you find, you can throw on too. But the real core four are Prodigy's Control, Rapid, and Adaptability, with a secondary shout-out to Storm Swell. Gems, affixes, and everything like that don't matter too much while you're leveling. You'll be changing gear too often for it to be even worth recommending. So, onwards we go then. We will just touch on your very first Paragon as you will get level 50, have some points to spend. So, I will do literally the basic board, which you want to end up looking like this. Grabbing just enough intelligence to activate your first glyph, which, depending on what you do get, ideally wants to be elemental mentalist for the extra multiplicative stacking damage and the amping of this uh, rare node here. But if you don't find this and you do find uh, yourself adept to increase the size of your firewall, then put that in too instead. Then when it comes to the Seneschal Construct and the Companion, the uh, two uh, governing stones and the six tuning stones you're ideally going to aim for as we level up. Now, we don't technically know which ones are available in which world tier. I imagine they may be split up, though that isn't guaranteed. You could just end up with any of them at any point, but in uh, the ideal situation, we're kind of looking for a specific couple. First of all, Focus Fire to give us an extra source of burning, which works in essentially every single sorcerer build, so that's going to be one that really works out for us. Then uh, we can also look out for Protect, just to have an extra barrier going for our barrier synergies, especially early on, though this will likely drop off in a later game build. Past that, kind of use what you want. The tuning stones are much more important. 
frigid support if you can get it to have more Hawfrost uptime past Frost Nova. That is going to be fantastic. Tactical support and voluminous support just to have uh, the uh, governing skill happen more and bigger is always going to come in handy. And uh, then we also want extra burning, which is always good, very synergistic. And while leveling resource support to have even more mana to do even more firewalls, which is something we might end up needing as mana management is the difficulty before we get perfect gear, so this one is likely to do very well for you. But the star of the show, and one of the reasons firewall leveling I think is going to be especially good in Season 3, is gripping support, having constant pull-in groupings even early on against enemies, stacking them repeatedly in the firewalls, which mitigates the main issue, which is enemies just drifting out of them. This is going to be fantastic and definitely is the one to go for as soon as you can. Past that then, ladies and gentlemen, you're kind of set. That's how it all comes together. Essentially use everything on cooldown, spend all your mana on firewall always, Arkalash it when you can't, look for the new aspect, look for the Seneschal stones I have recommended, and blitz your way up to level 50, or perhaps 45, do the Nightmare Keystone, and so on and so forth, and I will be with you by then with the intermediate 45 to 75-ish build, and then be Beyond that, your first proper endgame starter. We're going to explore Meteor. There's a few other little ideas I have had. A lot of the new stuff is opening up some synergies I've not seen anyone talk about yet. And generally, yeah, as I said, actually quite excited for Season 3 and the possibilities that lay ahead of us. And Sorcery is going to have a very good time again, even without Ball Lightning. For now, though, I hope this indeed helps. Like if you've enjoyed it, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until you meet again, a good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is. Uh, goodbye.